purpose driven. It's not. I am purpose driven. It's not personal. It's purpose. When you see me, there is deeper than what meets the eyes. There is a soul, a spirit. A divine purpose. I am the. Join me Thursdays at ten a.m. Finding happy on UNE Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. I see me through God's eyes. Affirmation: I am a masterpiece. I am whole. I am capable. I am smart. I am purpose-driven. I am loving. I am wealthy. I am kind. I am honest. I am chosen by God for an appointed time and purpose. I am a child of the universe. I have the mind of God. I am worthy. I am valued. I am protected. I am me, not greater or lesser than any. I am called to serve. I am divine. I am someone who matters. I am a force, a positive force. I am God made and God designed. I see me through God's eyes. Affirmation. I am a masterpiece. I am whole. I am capable. I am smart. I am purpose driven. I am loving. I am wealthy. I am kind. I am honest. I am chosen by God for an appointed time and purpose. I am a child of the universe. I have the mind of God. I am worthy. I am valued. I am protected. I am me, not greater or lesser than any. I am called to serve. I am divine. I am someone who matters. I am a force, a positive force. I am God made and God designed. Hello, 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 and happy today to you. I hope you're having an absolutely beautiful day. My name is Coach Raquel, of course, and you. Well, I'm I'm trying to get to coming at 10 a.m., but sometimes that doesn't happen. So here I am in the middle of the day <laughs> um, talking on Finding Happy. Finding Happy is a podcast um, that I believe God is using to help me find my own happy, as well as sharing that experience with others um, so they can also benefit from the process. Um, so that's what, what Finding Happy is, is. It really is a channel through which I learn my lessons, I connect with um, like minds, and I share the stories of my own growth, as well as engage others to learn about their stories and their growth. And so today, um, I'm going to be talking about um, the topic, honor your grind. Honor your grind. And by, <laughs> by grind, I mean your work. That's, that's what I mean in this um, instant, um, in, in this particular setting. Honoring your work, honoring your grind, honoring your purpose, honoring that which you create. The, not what you create, but the, the effort you put in creating, honoring that. So it's really the effort we're talking about, the showing up and doing. You know, um, so often we value the outcomes of things. We value what we're able to produce. We value and, and, and honor the, the, um, the solution. But oftentimes we don't pay so much attention to the process of, get, of getting there, you know, 
the work that you put in, the effort, the commitment, you know, the, um, the, the bleeding, the, 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 um, the spending, the investing. So that's what I'm talking about. Honoring your grind, honoring your efforts, honoring your, um, your commitments and, and the pro honoring your process, the process of, of work, the process of investing and the process of energy that you're expending, um, for something to, to, um, to come to be built, to be created. Right. So it, um, and the reason I'm talking about this today, it's because, you know, this morning I got up, I wanted to do the podcast at 10 o'clock as I'm supposed to, <laughs> but I, I somehow couldn't find my voice. And sometimes that happened, that happens to me too. And it's okay. Right. It's okay. I'm not late. The 10 o'clock is just to make sure that I know I'm supposed to do something. So as long as I, I do it eventually, <laughs> I'm going to honor that. But I wanted to do this because the God of my understanding has just been amazing to me, you know, and whenever I get confused or I feel lost or I feel um, like I'm in that restorative um, process, I, I've learned to be quiet and to be silent and to be still so I can listen and I can hear and I can understand what the process is about and what is what the process is trying to teach me and what the process is wanting of me. And um, when I woke up this morning, I, I, I felt what I usually would get up and think, um, like back in the day, I'd be thinking, oh my gosh, I'm, I feel like I'm having a bad day or oh my gosh, I'm not feeling right or why am I feeling this way? There, there was a time when I used to like um, be questioning myself when this happened, but now I'm at a place where whenever it happens, I honor it. So when I was feeling that feeling, I was like, okay, listen, just stop, you know? And so I went back to bed. <laughs> I, I take up the blankets like, like one would do at night. And it's not night. It's not the night time right now. What I would normally do at night is what I went in and I decided, okay, I'm going to cover all of my body. I'm just going to go back to sleep. I'm going to let this process ride. <laughs> okay. And then I, I did that for a while, but then there's like something tugging on me to get up. You know, I didn't really want to, but I, I did. And God just gave me this. And when he gave it to me, he just said, I want you to post that on, on Facebook. Um, and I didn't want to, I kind of wanted to put it on my website or talk about it first. And he's like, no, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to post it. And then after I posted it, he was like, no, I want you to talk about it. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to share first what the post was, and then I'm going to talk about my experience as it relates to this and, and how I think sometimes we dishonor ourselves without even knowing or without anyone else's permission or, dis or request, you know? So here it goes. For a long time, I thought I am doing this and it works. Imagine if we did it, did it together how great it could be. But soon I would find out that the only thing that changed was someone else was waiting to reap from my harvest, but I remained the only one planting, grinding. I have struggled with this. So if I am paying attention, everyone is living for themselves. So do I have to live for myself? This is not what God tells me to do. So this is what I have learned. Whatever God allows me to create, I make it available to others for them to also use it to generate for themselves, just as I am using it to generate for myself. But what I harvest from it is mine and what you harvest from it is yours. I, I am so tremendously grateful to God. He keeps saving me from myself, my innocence, my, my naivety and my folly. This is it, right? God will never let you down. So never feel guilty when God blesses you. He is blessing all of us. Let me say that again. He, God is blessing every single person you meet. I don't care what state you perceive them to be in. God is blessing them. And everyone around you is being blessed by God. As in that is everyone around you is being blessed by God. No matter how it may look, or how they may choose to see it. Gratitude, value, and doing your work is an individual responsibility. 
yes, one can put one can put one thousand to flight and two ten thousand. But that is only when the two are actually showing up and doing their individual portion. One plus one equals two. But it is only effort plus effort that multiplies the outcome. I may be late to this, I wrote, <laughs> but I am sharing it because God told me to. If you, like me, have been doing it wrong, I hope this helps. Humbled and tremendously grateful. That's what I'm talking about today because I don't know about you, but for me, for I, I have, God has blessed me with the desire and the passion to support others. And based on the kind of childhood I have, I had, I have a yearning, a longing, a, a desire to help people achieve or, or to help people get over or to help people um, not having to face certain difficulties if they don't have to, if I can help it, right? However, I can only support someone who ask, asks or welcomes that support, who values that support, right? But because of that nature in me, that desire in me, oftentimes I've gotten it wrong. Or it could just be that I'm becoming, you know, I'm, I'm going through the process of finding and becoming. And in that process, I, I learn at different stages. I sometimes try and fail and try and fail and try and win. And you know what I mean? And the same for you. What I'm learning now is I am not here to generate for you. You are. And even in my business, I, um, I had this idea and this concept, God gave it to me, where he showed me where um, the whole putting a, th a tenth, a, one can chase a thousand. And, and if you multiply that one to two, you could probably get 2,000. And if you multiply it by three, you can get 3,000. But the, the truth is, it's not just the, the, the adding one and one together that increases an outcome. It's the effort that's put together that increases an outcome. And so for me, um, and I hope that, well, my truth will hurt, may hurt people, may hurt people's feelings, that is. Um, but it's my truth. And the most I can do is present it as um, thoughtfully as possible. But I have to speak on the lessons I'm learning because I, I hope that it helps other people see themselves and, and um, realize that we stand in our own way and nobody really stands in your way. In 2016, my business was stolen from me. And I, I really thought that was all that happened. But then this week, today, I'm learning something more. And I keep learning. I'm telling you, like, they stole it from me in that that's what happened. But the truth of it and how I have chosen to see it is God removed me from a situation that was not, that was not healthy for me. The reason I choose to see it from a positive perspective and not negative is not because it wasn't a negative thing. I have to speak the truth for what it is. But what I take from it is something different. And the reason I take the positive from it is this. The lesson that it has become for me, it has formed the foundation of wisdom for me as an entrepreneur that I cannot even be mad that that bad thing happened to me or that seemingly bad thing happened to me, if you understand what I mean. I can't be mad about it. I cannot be mad about it because God used that thing, that, 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 thing, that, that harm that someone meant for me. God used that thing to form a foundation beneath my purpose that would cause me to learn and to develop and to gain understanding and insight so I can't be mad at it, right? But what God taught me today about that, in, that, that incident is like God said to me, it's like he didn't just, the person didn't just take away your business. It's not the business that all these years, I didn't want you to focus on the business, right? Another lesson I wanted you to focus on is that person was after your harvest. Oh my God. That per they were after your harvest. It's not just the business they wanted. They didn't want to do the work for you. What they wanted was for you to do the work, get the produce, and when you have produced, then they want their share, though they did not do the work that you did. And God showed me today that, my darling, you're doing it again. Ah, oh, 
I, I wish I could express how much God loves us. He loves me so much. It, it tears me up. It just tears me up. Like, I, why would he love me this much? I don't understand. Like, why would he? <laughs> so the message he said to talk about was honor your grind. See, people are after your outcomes, your produce. And so a lot of times in business, because I'm a serial entrepreneur, certified entrepreneur, and I, I have been sent to serve entrepreneurs, you know, owners. One of the mistakes we make, God bless you too. God bless you too. Thank you. God bless you too. One of the mistakes we make is um, in helping and supporting others sometimes is we make them rubbers of our blessings. What do I mean by that? We sometimes give people access to our produce that they didn't work for. We make them rubbers of our blessings. God sent you out there and he said, go and create this thing. I need you to do this particular thing. And you say, okay, great. And he may say to you, bring that one with you and you can bring that one with you. And I'm going to send this one to support you. And great, wonderful. You go and you do the work, right? But he did not tell you that whatever reward you get was for anybody else. That's why he sent them with you. So what he's teaching me is, yes, when you create this thing that I give you the power and the access to create, do not keep it to yourself. By all means, leave it available that anyone can also use it, oh glory. They too can use it for their own produce and harvest. What you produce, what your efforts produce is for you. What their efforts produce is for them. But I don't know if you're like me, because I've made the mistake where I go in and I'm doing, doing, doing and say, okay, this portion is yours, this portion is yours, this portion is yours. From what I've done. And then I sit back and I'm, I'm, and I'm upset because I'm like, but you didn't help me. You didn't do this and you didn't do that. God didn't send them to do that. And God did not tell you to give them your harvest. So who are you who are you supposed to be mad at? You can't be mad at them. They didn't they didn't they didn't steal it from you. Oh God, I love you so much. And I my naivety, my folly. Because sometimes we try, we we try we we're, we're all we're doing is trying to do our best. And sometimes in that in doing that best, we forget that we are a part of the benefactor, the beneficiaries. We are also a part of the purpose. Self, serving self is also a part of the purpose. That's why he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He didn't say love your neighbors and stop there. By saying, as you love yourself, he is saying you're supposed to love yourself first. You love you, you serve you, but you do not exceed that. You, you do not um, exceed self-service over service to others. So you're supposed to love them too. It's, you see, it's when your cup runs over, it's the over that everyone's get. So by all means, build what God sent us to build. It's like Noah, Noah built the ark. And yes, he invited everyone to come on the ark. But if he, whatever he gained from his work was his. And if you want to earn from what I do, by all means, what I'm not supposed to do is close the door on you. I'm supposed to give you access to that opportunity. But I am not here to generate from that opportunity for you. That's your job. That's your gig. But I think, I think what has happened is, because it has happened to me, where I have people who don't do the work, but then when the results happen, they're mad. What are you mad at? What are you mad about? How many hours did you put in? How much money did you put in? How much investment did you put in? How much time did you put in? So like I say, I'm going to, I, I speak my story because my story is God's divine um, appointment for me to use, to teach, to share, to empower, to inspire. And so I don't say this to hurt anyone because no one is guilty. We're all being used by God. But I've had a partnership where for the longest time I've been sitting, asking myself, what is the other putting in? Why do I feel like 
I'm carrying this load by myself. And more, I think it was like a couple of days ago, I removed myself from a network completely because here I was um, in, in this network I'm trying to forge, right? Because I'm thinking, man, I have this amazing product, this thing right here that I'm running. And it's doing wonders for me. I'm getting rewards. I'm seeing where it works. And if I alone am doing this, imagine if we did it together. And for the longest time, I keep sitting thinking, but there are more than one persons here. So why is it I'm the only one that um, cleans up this thing? I'm the only one that promotes this thing. I'm the only one that builds up this thing so that we all can benefit. See, I wasn't honoring my grind. I wasn't honoring me. God didn't tell me that. salvation itself. Why isn't salvation just free without participation? Because anything you have to participate, you have to uptake it. So even, even if we are to believe what the Bible says about salvation, why didn't God just say, okay, you're all saved. Now go to heaven or wherever. Why didn't he just say that? No, he makes it available to you. Now it's our responsibility to uptake it and use it to our benefit. So as I, sit, I sat here earlier today and I was feeling how I was feeling and I was just talking to God, like, God, I'm not going to struggle through this. I'm just going to sit through this. I'm going to be still in this because I don't want to miss the blessing, the lesson of this. So I'm going to sit in it, the discomfort of it. And that's what he told me. He said, listen, yes, one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. But it's not, the, it's not the mere fact that the number has increased that caused the success or the multiplication of the success. It's not, because, it's not just because um, the one became two why 10,000 was put to flight. No, 10,000 was put to flight because the one effort was multiplied by a second effort. See, it's not just coming together that multiplies something. It's coming together and doing it together that multiplies it. Oh, and as he said it to me, I'm sitting there like, answer to my problem, my, my question. I mean, I've just been going back and forth with it in my head, back and forth, back and forth. And I kept saying to God, so God, if, if, if I am to follow how I see other people interacting with this thing that you asked me to create, that I have created and made it available, right? I would become selfish because I was getting into this mindset of, you know what, maybe I should just do this me alone and forget everybody else. But then God is like, no, that's not what I told you to do. That's not what I told you to do. And he just took his time to just teach me. When you build this thing, when, when let's look at earth. God built earth. <laughs> oh, glory. God could have built the earth and build it with each of us having a house, a home, whatever it is that we work for. He could have just built and every person that's born, he could have them born in a, on a spot of land that belongs to them. But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He built the he earth, built and, he earth and he made it. Yeah. Hello, how are you? I'm good. What about you? I am fantastic. Thank you. Your name is? I'm Coach Raquel. My name is Samoa Pira. Samoa Pira? Did I say correctly? Yeah. Okay. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to my podcast. You want to share something with the audience? You no, know, I just want to come. I just come. I just want to come and join you. Okay, that's good. Go ahead. No. <laughs> oh, you no. just want to be with me? Okay. Go yeah, I just want to be with you. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. I I appreciate that. Yeah, that's called support. Thank you. So I was just talking about, you know, some lessons that God taught me recently because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur nine times over. And um, more recently, I had the struggle of I want to I want to work with others. I want to collaborate. You know, I, I have this phrase that I live by consolidate, collaborate, monetize. You know, how do we build it together? But I was go about it, going about it all wrong. I was going about it by numbers, right? By thinking, okay, if you and I join and this one joins and we, we increase in numbers, then we can produce. But then God is teaching me that, oh no, that's just the start. Coming together is just, it's just um, point A. To get to point B, now each one needs to have a responsibility. 
each one needs to have a gift that they also bring to the table. It's not just so, so we, we oft, I often hear persons refer to um, one can put, ten, put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000. But it's not just the two that's, that's putting the, putting, it's not just the two coming together that's put, ten, that put 10,000 10, to flight. It's the two committing and working and grinding and, and honoring and valuing and doing the work that put the 10,000 to flight, right? And I think oftentimes as entrepreneurs, especially entrepreneurs who want to be supportive and you're thinking, oh man, I have this great idea. And if I would partner and collaborate with someone else, we could both make it so much bigger. But then you partner with someone who sits on their laurels and they do nothing and you're the only one they're doing the work. And and when when when, when there's time for an outcome or when, when money is made and everyone is all stretching their hands like, okay, so where's my portion? Where's my 50% or my 10%? But you see, you are not due a 50% of any partnership um, or any percentage of any partnership without having done the work, done the investment, right? Because otherwise, all you're doing is hanging on to someone's coattail while they're carrying you and the job. And after carrying both you and the job, you're expecting them to also reward you. But nobody rewards, God rewards, right? You can only you may earn money from a from a job completed, from a task done, but the reward of that, the 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 value that comes from that is is from God. It's not from an individual. And even in working with people, if you notice, people always people don't just pay you money to pay you money. It's always assigned to a value. It's always assigned to something that they received that, that fulfilled them or made them happy or had impact in some way. So what I'm learning anyway, and what I'm, I'm, I'm seeking to share with, with those of you who may be making the same mistake I was making and, and feeling dissatisfied because you know something is missing and you may not be able to say, okay, this is what's missing. Because for me, I'm in partnerships where I'm like, something doesn't feel right. This is a wonderful human being and they're, they, they're, they're present, but something doesn't feel right. Being present is not enough. Being present is not enough. Being present is giving yourself the opportunity to participate. But after being present, you have to actually participate. What do you bring to the table? Because otherwise it's not being multiplied. And that's what I've been suffering from in my own business, because as I sit and I look, all I'm seeing is my, my outcomes. I'm not seeing my outcomes multiplied. I'm not seeing it becoming bigger than it should. Right? Because what I'm the, even though we have multiple people, nobody else is investing. Everyone is hoping that if they just show up and do enough, then what I'm doing will multiply. And then everyone can say, okay, so I can get a benefit from that. It doesn't work that way though. So today I just want to say, honor your grind. I've had to learn to honor my grind because the, the people who show up for you and do nothing, they're doing something elsewhere. They are committed elsewhere. Yes. And if anyone thinks what I'm saying isn't true, Check this, right? Pay attention to someone who goes to work to earn a living to pay their bills. How do they relate to that workspace that they believe pays their bills? They do overtime, even when they don't like the job. They show up every, every day based on their agreements. Yes, they sign contracts. And not only do they sign contracts, they show up every day. They complete act, um, tasks every day. They even do more than they're paid to do. They, they demonstrate the value of it by investing themselves because they don't want to lose that opportunity because in their minds, they're seeing, okay, this is going to pay me. And oftentimes what happens is in entrepreneurial pursuits, people don't understand the value of being an entrepreneur because it doesn't look like cash dollar right? But there's something that's more powerful than cash dollar, and it's called ownership. You don't get to own just because you show up. You have to invest just as you have to, to, for, you to for you to have a, own a home. You have to buy it, right? You have to spend money to buy it. And after you spend the money to buy the house, you have to clean it. You have to, care, you have to do caretaking. 
You have to law the um, lawn the you have to mow the lawn. You have to have your gardener come to keep. You have to do the upkeep. It's no different with, with business. But for some reason, persons think that just owning this idea, this concept is not as valuable as owning money, but it's the same thing. It's an idea. It was someone's idea to create money. Money is an idea. It's a concept. It's a tool. For example, I have this podcast. My podcast is a tool. See, someone was able to join me on the podcast for whatever reason, for whatever it is that he's getting from it. He, some kind of, he, he's, he must have sensed some kind of value for him to say, oh, I want to be a part of this. You know? So it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. That, that thing called ownership, right? And that ownership translates in stocks and shares, that you can sell if you actually do your work. So if you are in a company or you own something that's quote unquote, not bringing value to you in the way you want it to, then you need to ask yourself, what am I doing or what am I not doing for me not to be getting the results I I need or I'm seeking? Because you see, a lot of us just show up waiting for somebody else. That's why I think that's why people feel so feel it's better to go work for somebody because I don't have to worry about sell, um, generating the income. I don't have to worry about the hard work they have to do. I just show up and just do these these top ten things that I agree to. That in my mind is manageable. I just do these do these things and I get this money and I leave. But it's no different. And this is why, especially when persons say. It's not good to be a boss. It's better to be a leader. Your boss is not your leader. I don't want my boss to be my leader. My boss is someone who contracts me for a particular task. You pay me to do something. I do it. I leave. We don't need to be in a relationship. A leader is someone I pay. If you're going to lead me, then I should be able to dictate where you go, what you do, how you do it. We have it mixed up. So we're going to work thinking my boss should be my leader. Why? What does that boss owe you? Do you in, are you investing in this person? Your boss provides you with an opportunity to generate whether it is income or a result that you seek. A leader is someone who motivates you and takes you to a place you're seeking to go to. A leader helps you become who you want to become. And if you want that leader to act in your best interest, that's the person you invest in, <laughs> right? But we just have it mixed up. We think that being a boss is a bad thing. No, I do. I, that's why I'm an entrepreneur, because I don't believe my employer should be talking to me about my principles. Because my employer would only talk to me about principles that's favorable to them. And why wouldn't they? That's why I'm here to serve them. <laughs> so my boss, you pay me for something like my customers, my clients. Right. There are some clients that I have partnerships with where I say, OK, we can both agree to do this this way or that way. And then there are others that's just transactional. Right. So you're not supposed to be leading me anywhere. We're supposed to have a transaction and we both move on. Honor your grind. That's what I'm talking about. Honor your grind. Honor your work. Honor your process. Do not make other people robbers of your rewards. So what? just to repeat what I was talking about, it's just God helping me to understand that I was going about my business the wrong way. I was just getting up thinking, I'm going to do this work, and then I get miserable because other people are not doing their work that I think they should show up to do, right? Because when my work produced, everyone has their hand out. But it's for me to say, no, this thing right here that we've built or we, we invest in or we created, here it is. It's been created. Now it's on each of us individually to leverage it, to use it, to produce whatever outcome we seek. Some people come into part, get into partnership just for the affiliation, just to be able to say, I'm a part of that. Some persons come just to be able to say, I, I, I co-own that or I help to build and create this thing. But then there's some people who, who partner with you, have no intention of, of committing their time, their money, their mind, their ideas, nothing, right? 
unless you say do something, they do nothing. But they will be the first person to say, where's my part of the income or, or the harvest? Where's mine? I'm supposed to get some harvest. No, you're not. What you work for is yours. And what I work for is mine. So yes, we, like I said, God created this earth and he didn't create every child and say, this piece of land is yours. But he gave us equal access to earth and we now do the work to whether, whether, it's, whether it is we're going to inherit, whether we're born into a family that has done the work for us so we can inherit, or we have to do the work ourselves to purchase our own land, purchase our own home, purchase our clothes and food and all of that, working the land to make sure we can eat. Yes, you have the, the mango trees out there, but God did not pick, harvest the mangoes and bring it to us. No, but he, he has done the work. He's created it and made it available. So what I'm realizing is God is saying to me and us entrepreneurs, by all means, create what I've asked you to create. Invent this thing, whatever it is that I have given you the power to invent. But after inventing this, you need to use it to meet your, to generate um, income or rewards for your own needs. And anyone else who would like to benefit from that thing, they too have to come and put in the work to also generate. You're not supposed to give people what you generated for yourself. But this is it, right? We are in a society that says, the 1% is so cruel and the 1% have so much and they don't give it. And the 1%, I've never necessarily had that opinion, but I've always sat down and I, because I know that God is the one that rewards. So I've never sat thinking the wealthy is ungodly at all because it wouldn't make sense to me. It cannot make sense to me. If God is the one who owns all the hills, the lands and everything, then how is it that those people who have abundance is not of God? Make it make sense for me because it doesn't make sense to me. But this is it, right? There are some common things with people who have, who have abundance. There's this thing called accountability, responsibility. We would like to sit and think they don't work. But if we're really honest with ourselves, we know that's not true. I've had some degree of abundance. And let me tell you something about abundance. It comes with all kinds and sorts of responsibilities. The bigger, the more you have, the more responsibilities you have, right? The more you have, the more bills you have. I've come to understand and appreciate and value and desire the simple life, okay? And if I had it my way, I would be living in some forest area in a little hut that has all the basic amenities, and that's where I would live. I don't do it because of security, and I'm in a world now that I, I feel that I need to be in a certain place to feel safe. But I'm saying if I had it my way, I would want it this, I would want life to be the simplest because those are the most fulfilling, that is the most fulfilling life to live. The simple life. My dad did it. And for a long time, as a young girl growing up, I was like, I didn't understand. He only ate what he planted. I didn't get it. But he was healthy because he ate what he planted. He knew, he knew what he was putting in his body. He didn't have to worry about um, what other people did when they, when, they, when, they, when they sold him their goods. Thank you so much, OJ28. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate that. He didn't. So I'm saying we have to get to a place. The reason a lot of us don't have is because, we're, it's because we show up, but we're not willing to put in the work. We are sitting waiting for others to do the work so that we can reap. That doesn't make sense. It's not going to happen. And this is what happens when you, when you uptake things you don't, you didn't work for. It doesn't work for you. Believe me, when you take things that don't belong to you, it doesn't serve you. That's why there are two things I don't do. I don't do struggle love and I don't do struggle money. And for those of you, if you've heard me before or you've been to my website or whatever, you, you'd see that there. I do not do struggle love or struggle money. If I'm working, even this week, I said to a client of mine, I said, whatever, a, she's a client and a partner. And I said, whatever it is 
that we do together or you ever do on my behalf. If I come to you and I ask you for something and you, 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 you have a negative re reaction, whether you tell me or not, doesn't matter, but, but there's a negative feel, you, you feel resistance, don't do it. This is what happens, right? When you struggle to earn something, it doesn't bless you. Hmm. You know, I, I don't know if you've ever had the case where you work for something, you get paid and you don't know where the money went. Sit back and ask yourself, how did I earn this money? Was I happy? Did this person pay me out of joy, pure joy? Or did they struggle to pay me? Did I struggle to deliver the work for this, to earn this? A lot of persons earn and blow the money and don't know where it went. You know why? Energy. The struggle around it. You know the kind of money I like to earn? I like to earn from projects where they want to get rid of the money. <laughs> they can't wait. They're running me down to pay me. You see, when they're running after you to pay you, they're not saying, you didn't cross this T. You didn't dot this I. You didn't. They're not busy picking you and the assignment apart. Because they're happy to pay this money. And they're happy to pay to you. I'm saying honor your grind. You owe it to yourself not to just drag yourself into work. If the work you're doing, you have to struggle to do it, quit. I did that. I had a really, really good job. And I quit that job to become an entrepreneur. Because I was, I was sinking in depression and I had one of the best jobs someone could want. I had a great job, great position, but I wasn't happy. I was struggling. Every time I went into my office, I felt like the, the office was getting darker and darker. And I just decided, okay, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do what makes me happy. And like I said at the top of this, of this broadcast, the, I, I, I created a company that I, I remember one year, all I, all I ate was mangoes, and I think it's called star fruit. Yeah. I would freeze the mango. I had the mangoes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner while I was, I was still working and I was saving my money doing research for this company I was starting up. One year later, the company became profitable and it was taken from me, stolen from me. But like I also said at the beginning of this broadcast, I don't have any regrets because God used that as the foundation for where I now stand in my purpose. That probably was one of the best things that happened to me because I was so naive. I was struggling. It was such a, I was, I was killing myself, literally. I'm going to share this. Be prepared, it's, it's ghastly, but I'm going to share it because I want, if there's any entrepreneur listening here right now, I need you to understand, you need to check yourself how you're making people robbers of your gift and of your rewards and of the divine purpose God gave you. I remember one day I was sitting in the office while I had that company with my assistant next to me and I had forged a new partnership and I had a new partner on who I gave 50% of my company, even when the, the company registration office the lady was like, no, don't do that. Why would you do that? Because you had, you, you spent a year building this company. Why would you just give someone 50%? And I was like, I want to be fair, you know, and he was going to buy in, he was supposed to pay, he was going to pay me for it. He hadn't yet. And, um, so that's what I did. Little did I know that but when he came into my company, my company was on the up and up, all our books and everything, you know, intact, all our filings, government filings, everything was well, but he didn't have that. His business, he was going to be charged millions because his company was not in good standing, right? With the government. So what did I do? I used my business to help him save his business. Now, the very day that his, I think he was supposed to pay 1.2 million or something like that in taxes. But when I used my company, he came down to, I think it's like either 220, 220,000 or just 250, somewhere in the 200 bracket. 
And the day I sat on the phone, because it's very difficult sometimes to get through to the, the, the government bodies that handle this. So when I got through to them, I'm like, no, we're not leaving. So my assistant and I were sitting there and we're like, we're staying on this phone. We don't care what happened. We've gotten, we, we have someone now who's assisting us. We're not disconnecting this line. So I was hungry. I was tired, hours on the phone. And we're about, and I'm happy because I'm about to help this guy save me over what? I think he's over a little less than a million. He, I, will, we were, I was going to help him save. And again, like I said at the top of this podcast, I am passionate and it's in my, my description. I am someone who's passionate about helping other people achieve their targets, right? By divine, I'm a coach. So there I was wanting to help. And there are multiple things happening that I refuse to pay attention to because in my mind, they were distractions. I got phone calls I didn't take. I got, I remember the lady who cooked because we had someone who cooked for the staff and everything. She came calling me saying, it's time for you to eat. No, I, I didn't respond because I'm not letting this person off the phone. I'm going to tell you something that happened to me. And if, if you're grossed out by blood, mute the thing. I sat there and I don't know what happened. I don't remember if it was time for my menstrual cycle. I don't know what happened. But if you've ever had a hose um, attached to a pipe and then you cover the end of the hose, right? So the water is running, but it can't escape the hose because you're covering it. And then you let it go and it just shoots out. That was what happened with me from my private. I was sitting there and the blood just gushed out of me. Now, any logical person would be thinking I stopped, right? I didn't stop. I didn't stop. I remember they came in. My assistant was a guy, by the way. He sat there. He's like, oh, my God, we have to stop now. You've been going. I remember I started working that morning about from 3 a.m. And it was now about 6 something in the evening. And I never got up from that desk. Right? And that was the last sign God gave me that the, you should stop. I didn't stop. But you see, this was a defining moment. After that, I sat there while they were cleaning around me and everything. Lady came back on the phone. She said, okay, we're going to grant you the, um, the, 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 disc the, I don't remember what she called it, but it wasn't a discount, but it was, it's a discount that he got, but it wasn't a discount that they called it. They were going to waive some of the fees. So all he had to pay was 200 and something thousand dollars instead of $1.2 million. The moment she said yes, and everything was good. That was when I lost my, that was when I really lost my company. Cause what I didn't know that God was trying to save me from was this. See, he had plans and I didn't even know I had persons from different countries. I remember persons from Australia was contacting us because our business was international and persons. I remember one lady and I, I wish I could reconnect with her. Her name was Rebecca. And she attended, attended a university in Australia. And she called me and she said, I think someone is trying to steal your company. And I said to her, thank you for the information, but it is well. This is my partner. I'm in a partnership. I'm going to respect this person. I'm going to, all of those things, right? But who said I couldn't respect him but honor me? Who said I couldn't respect him, respect the partnership, but honor me? I didn't even give ear to it because in my mind, I'm honoring the partnership, but God never said to honor the partnership over myself. Some of us are in relationships that we're honoring the, the agreements over ourselves. We're not supposed to, we're supposed to honor the agreements, of course, but not more than ourselves. Love thy neighbor as thy, as you love yourself, not more. Right. And for sure. After his company was no longer an issue in any, um, in any problems with the, with, the, with the government, he took his company and he also took mine with it. <laughs> it's, it's not funny, but I have to laugh because if I don't laugh, you know, that, that moment that God gave me so many signals, he even put my body through a process where I lost blood and I still didn't stop. I am so loyal. But when it gets damaging to self, it's not loyalty anymore. So I'm, I'm, 
I'm sorry if you know it was if it grossed you out or whatever, whatever but I, I needed to share the experience because what is it that's bleeding you? But you're still going, thinking this is life. Well, I've got news for you. I have never earned more money struggling than I have not struggling. It's amazing how I can just one as long as I get up and I'm living obedience to God, I simply say, Lord, may I have, and it is done. I used to think I had faith. I'm 41 years old. And for 40 years, I thought I had faith. I didn't have faith until 2022. Not because of the pandemic or anything. No, 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 no. Not that at all. I stopped. I figured out who I was. I, and I started living in obedience. It was really the obedience that changed things. I started being obedient to God. The moment I started being obedient to him, faith happened naturally thereafter. See, all my life I thought I needed to have faith. But faith is not something I, well, from what I've learned, that I get up and pursue. No, it's not something I get up and tell myself to do. I don't get up and tell myself to breathe. I don't get up and say, inhale, exhale. No, faith should be the same way. It should happen organically. It should just be. And for faith to be, we have to be in obedience. Let me tell you what you cannot have faith while doing. You will never be able to have faith if you know that you're disobeying God. And that's simple to understand. If you're, if you're, you, you, well, we're, we've all had parents, right? <laughs> if you grew up with your parents or an elder or anyone who you had to obey in order to be in good standing with them, you know that when you disobey them, you don't have any confidence or any good standing. They don't have to flog you. They don't even have to know that you did something wrong. You are already with the knowledge that I disobeyed my mother. Oh, she's not going to be happy with me. So guess what happened? You start staying away from her. Right? You start, even when the parent doesn't know that you've disobeyed yet, you know, they don't know yet. But you are already living the consequences because of your self-knowledge, your self-awareness of what you've done. So faith is the same way. Because if your parents, if, if you have parents who always take care of you, always give you your allowance and everything, right? The only time you start questioning if they're going to give you those, those allowances is if you, knew you'd, if you know you've done something that they told you that if you did this, then I'm going to take away this. That's the only time you don't have faith in it. I have sat and I've watched and I thought, I said, God, there's no way I can love someone more than you can love them. There's no way a movie can end on such high note, but my life won't end on a high note. The guy gets the girl in the movie, but in real life, I don't get what I ask God for. Oh, come on. <laughs> but in order for me to be able to reap the rewards that God has for me, I have to obey him. Easiest rewards I've ever gotten. Oh my goodness. Easiest. I, I don't struggle for anything anymore. There's no need. And so Whatever causes me to struggle, I know I have to release. And you know, this is a beautiful thing. If you're in a job that you don't like and you're struggling and you're stressing, and you, got up on, you get up and you say, you know, I'm leaving, and they really want you, you'd be amazed to know how it turns in your favor. I have. I left my job and I'm now a consultant for them. A lot of the times we don't, and I'm, and I'm just going to wind down now. A lot of the times we don't have what we want because we haven't asked. We haven't made the ask for it. And after, uh, in, in those cases where we have asked, right, and we get access, what do we do with that access? Are we, are we, do we get the access and say, okay, someone is going to bring this to me now? Or do we get the access to it and use it by doing our work? By doing the work. We have to show up and do the work. And the work doesn't have to look the same for everyone. There are two important things I think that any successful outcomes require. Investment of either time or money. 
and alignment. Investment and alignment. A lot of us are correctly aligned, but are not investing. And a lot of us are investing where we are not correctly or divinely aligned. And that's why we cannot, we cannot connect with the rewards God has for us. It's not a matter of God sending us the rewards. We already have everything we need. We have it. We have access to it. But we have to invest either time or money, mind, right? And we have to align effectively, divinely, right? So I just want to say thank you so much for, for joining me, um, OJ28, um, Marian Stout, Pink Squirrel, um, BDX who joined me on the live. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, OJ29. And um, did, I, did I miss anyone? Philly, is that Phil, Philly or Filthy? Well, breakfast, P breakfast. Thank you so much. And um, GSIU, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for listening. It is my hope. It is my hope that as I did this so freely, so easily, without struggle, without stress, it was such a, um, it just, it was such a beautiful process, this. It is my hope that it blessed you. It is my hope that it inspired, empowered, it, it, it helped you. You don't have to necessarily believe what I've said, but what I hope is that it, it disrupts your own thoughts. It, it, it creates a shift in how you think that it, it causes you to question. So that you, once you start questioning, then you can start searching for the answers within you. Really appreciate what you shared. Thank you so much, OJ28. Thank you. And I appreciate you, I appreciate you saying that out loud for me to hear it. It helps you for sure. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Awesome. Honor your grind. Honor your grind. Honor your work. Honor your investment. And remember, don't make other people rubbers of your rewards. What you do, what you, what your work produce is for you. The people who are aligned with your life, you give them access to what you have access to. It is their responsibility to use that access to reap their own rewards. May God bless you. And I just want to share this poem. I'm going to share the male version and the female version, and I hope it continues to bless you. And then I'm just going to say thank you so much. This was Finding Happy. I'm Coach Raquel. If you want to learn more about what I do by choice, you can go to mycoachministry.com. Um, that's for my coaching, um, what I do with coaching. I have resources and so on there that you can access freely. And I also have another resource, walkingindivinepurpose.com, that you can also go there. You can access um, whatever resources there and use it, leverage it for your benefit. You are, you are so loved. You are so valued. You are so powerful. Uh, you are so powerful. Okay. So for my podcast, I come on every Thursday. Um, I try to come on at 10 o'clock in the mornings, but it's, I won't say that I'll just say on Thursdays. <laughs> because I don't want to not come on at 10 o'clock. Um, but um, when do you come online here on podcasts? It's at, on Thursdays, unless I feel led to otherwise, then I, then I do that. Um, you can find, um, yeah, so, and, you, and when you, if you go to mycoachministry.com, you, you'll see my podcast there and other stuff I do, books, whatever else that you can access to use and leverage for you. I am very passionate about supporting people and, um, and people winning you know, people connecting with, because God has already blessed us. That thing that you're dreaming of, it's already here. It's just to find the pathway to it. Yeah. So please listen to this and um, just know that you are so loved. You are so loved and have the best, 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 best rest of day. I see me through God's eyes. Affirmation. I am a masterpiece. I am whole. I am capable. I am smart. I am purpose driven. I am loving. I am wealthy. I am kind. I am honest. I am chosen by God for an appointed time and purpose. I am a child of the universe. I have the mind of God. I am worthy. I am valued. I am protected.
I am me, not greater or lesser than any. I am called to serve. I am divine. I am someone who matters. I am a force, a positive force. I am God made and God designed. I see me through God's eyes. Affirmation. I am a masterpiece. I am whole. I am capable. I am smart. I am purpose driven. I am loving. I am wealthy. I am kind. I am honest. I am chosen by God for an appointed time and purpose. I am a child of the universe. I have the mind of God. I am worthy. I am valued. I am protected. I am me, not greater or lesser than any. I am called to serve. I am divine. I am someone who matters. I am a force, a positive force. I am God made and God designed. I am purpose driven. It's not personal. It's purpose. When you see me, there is deeper than what meets the eyes. There is a soul, a spirit. A divine purpose. I am the join me Thursdays at ten AM. Finding Happy on UME Radio, Thursdays at 10 a.m.